So now that we've done a brief recap of what reactive programming is all about, let's go ahead and give a quick summary of the Java Reactive Streams API. And you'll see that the API that's defined in standard Java is actually pretty simple. And then we'll talk about the key abstractions that are part of that API, which include publishers, subscribers, and subscriptions. So Reactive Streams was actually introduced into Java as part of the Java 9 release. And I think that came out roughly 2016 or so. Remember, Java 8 came out in 2014. So it was a couple of years later, they added some new capabilities. And there's something in the Reactive Streams API in Java 9 called the Flow interface or the Flow class. And this Flow class or this Flow API added support for so-called stream-oriented publish subscribe patterns. And you can see here that you've got a publisher, which is told by a subscriber how many items that the subscriber is willing to be passed at any given point in time. That's a form of flow control that we'll talk about later. And then the publisher goes ahead and sends out that many items to the subscriber or subscribers, because there could be more than one. The publisher subscriber model here really combines two patterns that we've undoubtedly seen before, or hopefully you've seen them before when you've taken other courses that focus on patterns like the CS3251 course here at Vanderbilt. And you can see that one of the patterns from the Gang of Four book is the iterator pattern, which applies a pull model. So the apps, so the subscriber will go ahead and indicate how many items they want the publisher to send them. So the subscriber says, I would like five items or 10 items or 20 items or whatnot. So that's kind of the iterator pattern. It's a pull-based model. And then the, from the other point of view, we have the observer pattern, which is more of a push model that's used to have the publishers react by pushing items to the subscriber or subscribers, which are the sinks. They're the things that actually consume the data. So publishers or producers that produce X amount of data where X is designated by subscribers. And then the subscribers receive those events that are pushed to them by the publisher. So that basically is the combination of the iterator and observer patterns. And that forms, in this case, essentially the publisher subscriber pattern, which is another pattern from the POSA 1 book. Now, the way this is actually achieved in Java 9 and beyond, of course, is by something called the Java Flow API. And surprisingly enough, there's really only a very small number of interfaces that are part of the Flow API. There are four of them, and they're shown here on this diagram. And as you can see, they're pretty simple. We've got Publisher, which has a subscribe method where a subscriber can essentially attach itself to the publisher to, to indicate that it wants to receive notifications. We have Subscribers or Subscriber, which is an interface that allows publishers to call back when a subscription's been uh, attached or publishers, a subscriber's been attached. And that is used to kind of start the ball rolling. And then we have three key methods, on next, on error, and on complete. And these are all hook methods we'll talk about quite a bit because they're important to knowing how events get propagated from a publisher to one or more subscribers. And then we have something called a subscription. And when uh, a subscriber is connected to a publisher, a subscription is created, and that can be used to to indicate to the publisher how much data to send. It can also be used to cancel the subscription if the subscriber doesn't want to receive events anymore. And then there's another interface called a processor, which implements both publisher and subscriber methods. And that's really all there is essentially in the Flow API, which is part of Java 9 and the standard interfaces for the Reactive Streams model. And if you take a look at www.reactive streams.org, you'll learn more about this. And this was basically the document that guided the standardization of the Java Flow API and Reactive Streams that came out in Java 9. So what are the key abstractions in this API? Well, there are three of them, and we're going to talk through each of these right now. So it's publisher, subscriber, and subscription. So a publisher or publishers, because there could be more than one in a program, are data sources that produce zero or more events that can be pushed to subscribers. So the key here is zero or more. There may be an infinite number, there may be a fixed number, or there may be none whatsoever. So those are the three different models. Then there's subscribers. Subscribers are sinks that register for and consume events that are pushed by publishers. So publishers publish, subscribers consume, 
and receive the events. And the way that publishers do this is, as we'll see in a moment, after subscribers subscribe to the publisher, the publisher then can go ahead and publish events by invoking one or more of three hook methods. And those hook methods are on next, on error, and on complete. And a hook method is just a method that can be overridden and refined by some concrete class, like some concrete subscriber. Now, the, as you take a look at the, the three methods defined here, you can see that I have some weird notation. It's actually regular expression notation. And the way to read this is the on next method could be called zero or more times, which means that's the zero or more events that are published. But on error or on complete can only be called once and may not be called at all. There may be circumstances under which errors never occur. And there may be circumstances under which your stream never terminates because it's meant to go on forever or as long as forever means in, in worlds where computers can be crashed and hacked and so on. So those are the three main methods and that little regular expression gives a synopsis of the semantics of those methods. A subscription is used to control the flow of events between one or more subscribers and one or more publishers. And so what you can do here is if you're a subscriber, you can use a subscription to indicate to the publisher how much data to send. That's that iterator pattern we talked about, where you can say, I will take up to N items, please. And you can also cancel the subscription. So the way things start out is a subscriber, when it's created, will go ahead and subscribe to the publisher, which says, please start sending streaming data. Note that a stream, a reactive stream, is very much like a Java sequential or parallel stream that we've talked about before, where they're lazy. They don't do anything until the, the, the terminal operation. It's not quite used. Those, those are not quite the terms that are used in the reactive streams model, but it's very much like Java streams where a terminal operation is basically a method like subscribe. And subscribe says, okay, now let's set the wheels in motion. So that's when things will start to, to run. But it's, it's lazy and doesn't do anything up to that point. Once a subscriber subscribes, it passes itself in, and then the on subscribe method is called back by the publisher, and that enables the subscriber to start requesting events. And what it would do in that case, it would go ahead and say, I would like events, please. And you can indicate how many events you want. You can say, I want one event at a time. I want 10 events at a time. Or you can also give a, a max value, like max long, and then it'll just send you basically an infinite number of events until, uh, until something changes and it creates an error callback or it creates a uh, completion callback. But nothing is sent until the request is triggered. Now, there are three general types of things that can get pushed from a publisher to a subscriber or multiple subscribers. One is a, a data notification, which is processed by or in, indicated by calling the on next hook method on the subscriber. So the publisher uses that to notify the subscriber that there's something there. And there could be zero or more of these things. And they form what's known as a stream. So this is the stream processing that we're talking about with reactive streams. There's also a success method that's called a single time, which is basically when all the other events are done. And this is method is known as on complete. And you can kind of think of this sort of like end of file, if you're familiar with the Unix shell programming pipeline model where you get sent an end of file when you're done. So on complete says we're finished. And then the last type of call is the on error hook method, which can also only be called one time. And this can be used to indicate that something's happened and you're giving it an exception to indicate that whatever problem you're indicating, whatever problem has occurred. Notice that you could only have one call to on complete or one call to on error and they're mutually exclusive. You can't have on error followed by on complete. You can't have on complete followed by on error. Uh, you either succeed or fail when you're done. So that's the end of the quick overview. Now, as we'll talk about in the next lesson, uh, these APIs are intentionally very simple. In fact, they're probably too simple. And we'll talk more about that. And you'll see in practice that there's a lot more stuff that's used in the various implementations of these reactive streams frameworks, but that'll come here in just a moment.